Today we're at my studio at Bank Cottage and we've managed to persuade Ed Hartwell to come all the way up from London on the train. Hello Ed. Hi, how are you doing? All right, <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for coming to see us. That's all right. Um, so, so you're a psalm chap originally. I am, yeah. And that's... before that, what happened? How did you get into the music biz? Um, well, I've been playing guitar since I was, since I was eight and then when I realised that some people make a career out of music one way or another, I just, that's what I did, I went to college and I studied music, and when I went to uni, that's when I really got fed up of relying on other musicians for bands and got into the studio side of things and just went from there. And then um, towards the end of uni I think I sent out about 150 CVs to every studio up and down the country. I could did everybody else in the course imagine. do that as well though? No. <laughs> no. And um, I got eight replies oh. out of 150, six were no's, and I had an interview for Sam and Delaine Lee, the post-production yeah. place. Yeah. Um, and Sam came good. Fantastic. And that's that, really. Who interviewed you? Was it? Um, not Trev. No, it was. You have to sit a test right. when you get oh. for a job at Sam. Yeah. All sorts of questions, from what is a triplet to um, why do you store tape the way you store it, and all kinds of. What's a bits triplet? And bombs. One of three babies. Yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> and everything in between. So. <laughs> That's what I wrote. I did actually, any question I didn't know the answer to, I did write something funny down. Yeah. I think I think that And that got you the gig. I think so, Clearly, yeah. sense of humour is obviously important. That is a good thing to have. You've got to get on with people, haven't but you? But what, what interested you in music in the first place? Did you have a musical upbringing or anything? Um, any reason to... Yeah. So you got my, brothers and sisters or...? My dad always played guitar in a pub band. Did he? Right. Yeah. So uh, a covers band? A, yeah, covers band. Yeah. Doing all that Brilliant. classic. And where was this? Where did you grow up? Uh, Wiltshire. I'm from a little village called ah. Burbage. So, right. yeah, just, uh, just a bit north of Stonehenge. Right, Stonehenge, <laughs> yeah. well, it's the birthplace of rock and roll, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. God love those druids. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> the little people. Yeah. So, yeah, Dad was a guitar player in a band, and so I was like, oh, you know, you want to be like your dad, don't you, when you're little? So I started playing guitar quite young, and mm. then, coincidentally, they started guitar lessons at my primary school not long after Brilliant. I started doing yeah. that. So one thing from there, and then to another, yeah. And Dad's persistent in only letting us listen to good music, which was I mean, I was only really Mum wasn't allowed to put any CDs on when I was growing up. <laughs> <laughs> the only stuff we were allowed to listen to was Zeppelin, The Stones, The Who, Cream, that sort of stuff. It's a proper musical and, education, um, really. Yeah, I know. I'm pretty yeah. grateful. I remember yeah. one year Mum wanted a, a Beautiful South CD. Right. That didn't go down very well. <laughs> we bought it for her, but she wasn't allowed to listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> Superb. <laughs> so yeah, and that's it really. That's so, really yeah, so you went to the, yeah, you, know, you so you studied and you studied music composition. It says here on your website. On my website, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. It was um, so the course was it was popular music and recording. It was called right. at Salford, mm. and sort of by the final year, you go you have to pick two modules. Mm. So I did composition and music. Text, right. So you're writing pop songs or. No, I wrote, I wrote 20 minutes of death metal. Fantastic. Because yeah. <laughs> it's tough, because you can't really mark composition no. in an academic it's, sense, yeah. can you? Because as long as you can argue that's how I wanted it to sound, you're kind of right, you know. So it was a bit of a joke, that module, to be honest. <laughs> um, but again, it meant that you had, it... to, you had to write 20 minutes worth of music, record it, mm. and write about it basically. So did you get any guide did you get any teaching on how to compose things then? Did you get any fully um teach about song structures and things? Yeah we had all taught all yeah. of so song structures and you know. so that's kinda of useful isn't it? Yeah, no it is it is useful. The actual module maybe yeah. not the actual work maybe not so much. <laughs> but uh, the yeah the teaching was great yeah. I don't I'm not knocking So that when at all. so when was it you started at Sam? What year would that have been? Two thousand and seven. Right. I think. So what, what yeah. were the first few sessions you did? Was there anything particularly memorable? Yeah, were you, um, did, I mean, was it, how, did you, how did you find it? Because you, you know, you, your first session is kind of like, going, blimey, this is, is this how it really works then? Is it? Yeah, my first session was actually with a, just some rich kid who wanted to, his mum, he wanted, he was an opera singer, right. some rich teenager whose mum wanted to you know, have him on CD. And it was with, that, with a guy called Rob Smith, or Smitty, as he's known, and um, it was in two. So we were on the SSL and I went down and I'd never seen it, I'd never used an SSL before. And he tried in an hour to tell me everything it did. So I just said, <laughs> uh, okay. It was a bit daunting. Yeah. 
So that was, but the first, I think my first proper session where I engineered or anything, well, when I, I maybe in at the deep end. So I have a tendency to just throw you in on a session right. and be like, you know, sink or swim. And the first one I remember was a Tom Jones session, recording Tom Jones. Mm. I thought it went pretty well. The song hasn't been released. That might be my fault. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so. And you engineered yeah. it? Then you yeah, engineered I engineered it. Yeah, it was wow. Moose T and Tom Jones. And it went well at the time, I think. Mm. But I've never heard the song since, so maybe it didn't go so well. I'm sure it's more to do with the but, political uh, <laughs> yeah. behind the scenes yeah. things. You know. Yeah. Um, contractual things. But yeah, that's one of the things they can't teach you at uni is yeah. you know, the working situation, you know. So who were you mainly yeah. assisting when you were at Psalm? was it um, Trevor or Steve Lipson or no, I mean, house or was it just whoever happened to be in? Whoever happened to be in because yeah. Trevor has a consistent guy, an assistant Re yeah. assistant yeah. or engineer. Um so you do a few sessions with Trevor. Mm -hmm. Um and what was that? Like? What, what do you remember from doing with Trevor? What, what did you pick up? Um, I picked up perseverance and patience. I think <laughs> yeah. are the two things. You know, um, try everything, right. and nothing's you know nothing's wrong. Yeah. You know, um, well, and obviously say. lots of you know just general techniques. What you know, mic mic techniques. What he's mm -hmm. used to using is you know, and also how to act around. The artist, you know, studio etiquette is how how we used to call it. Um, it's quite a big thing, I think, and that's a that's a lot of that's one of the main things you don't see in um, assistants. Sometimes the ones that don't last mm. are the ones that you know sort of treat the clients like they're their mate, mm. and you can get to that point, mm. but there has to be a a level, I think, of professionalism and that. Well, was that something you just picked up? Or, you know, that you realised as soon as you walked in the room, or was it something that he's, he, uh, uh, he at one point went, Oi, don't talk to him like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't I didn't get in too much trouble for being out <laughs> of place. Um, you just kind of pick it up. Mm, you just mm. kind of, you know, read, you sense read the room. And, hierarchy. You know, yeah, there is definitely a hierarchy in the studio, mm. which I think is a great thing. Mm. And um, sometimes it's missing, but, you know. I don't I mean if I'm engineer and I don't particularly enforce it on the assistant, no. I don't make them feel like, you know, you're working for me or anything like that, which is kinda of how it is, but um, there is, there should be a hierarchy in the mm, studio, mm. I think. So, so who else did you assist that you remember? Who else? Oh yeah, so um I got quite towards the end I got it quite friendly with Steve Lipson. So I assisted him on Sort of regularly while he was still at Sam. Now, how was he to work um, with? He's got quite a dry sense of humour. He is he? great to work yeah. with. I absolutely loved working with him. And what uh, were, you, were you operating the Pro Tools for him? And yeah, that's the great thing about Steve is you. He'll just say, "Yeah, hop on and do your thing." And if there's something he wants doing but he can't be asked or can't figure it out, you like, know, if, like he's not. He probably won't mind me. I hope he doesn't mind me saying. But sort of beat detective mm. was something that. You know, I hadn't really done before. Mm. Not, uh, I can't remember who the session was for. And he was like, "Can you, you know, go and time these drums up?" So you know, you have to go and learn it. And right. that's a great thing. He yeah. always, you know, taken him had to make some impulse responses for him and all that kind of technical stuff. Mm. He's really good to learn from. And you know, mm. he's he has got a very dry sense of humour, and a lot of people are kind of kind of scared by him, but. You know, he can he can take it back. So if you give as good as you get, you're going to get on pretty well with him. Mm. I always think. So. You were hearing quite early on, really, didn't you? It wasn't long before you were being thrown into the deep end. Yeah. And actually, I was twiddling the knobs. I was quite lucky actually, because a lot of people sit on night reception at Sam for at least a year. Mm. Uh, I know people that have gone almost three years. I think. Wow. Um, but when I started, it was. Within two weeks, six people, sort of above me, as it were, were cut, either fired or left. <laughs> right. In two weeks, so I was bumped right up, yeah. pretty quickly. Was a bit of luck then. Which, yeah. So right place, right time, yeah. and then, you know, and then what with various management changes as well. There, again, right place, right time, a lot of the time. So I went up quite quickly, which was yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, got into the old 
twiddling knobs. You don't get to twiddle too much, too many knobs on Trevor sessions because he's very right. much, he's all in the box, you know. Oh, right. um, I mean, obviously you've got to record it. You've got to track it. Yeah. But um, yeah, mix, sort of mix sessions for him are quite dull unless you're doing them. <laughs> right. <laughs> you, you know, because I've assist you assist like Rob Orton. Yeah. Who obviously is old Trevor or, or Tim Widener who's been with Trevor for years. Mm. And there's only so much you can watch the computer screen over someone's shoulder before you get really bored. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, but that's how you learn, isn't it? You know, just yeah. watch, watch over people's shoulders and try and copy them when you get a session. Yeah. Um, so what things did you engineer when you were still at the Psalm then? What that you're proud of that came out? Um, probably my proudest is the Jeff Beck album. Right, because it, uh, yeah. Well, what was he like? Always, he's a bit of a legend. He is a bit of a legend. He and he's just like Nigel Tufnell. Um, <laughs> didn't say that. No, there is, there's a, yeah, there's that. a video of him on YouTube talking about with guitars, and it is it's very spot yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, now he's he's great. Really yeah. easy to talk to. He's not no ego. You know, happy yeah. to sit down and have a chat. And so who else played on that album? Um, there was. A lot of people. We got the right. we it's got the guest artists. Well, um, yeah, Josh Stone was on it. Yeah. Imelda May. That's a great thing about Jeff. He's a big. He champions a lot of music. Mm. Um, he's that really must good have been at that. Quite and exciting to sort of be turning up with people like those people. To yeah. Come into the studio and sort of having to be ready for them and. You know, you were doing the headphone mixes and things like that. Yeah. All or? kinds of yeah, I think um, or track and vocals or whatever it was. For How do you do that? If you've got somebody like Joss Stone turning up, you, you, you presumably you try and make sure you're absolutely ready before they arrive. Yeah, you know, ev yeah. line check everything twice. And, um, <laughs> Get them a good headphone mix? You know, yeah, good headphone mix, which when it's all in the box, I mean, you could just give them the mix. Hmm. But, you know, set up some auxes and have a. You do it on the auxes within Pro Tools yeah, and send it to another pair of outputs. Yeah, and have a headphone thing. Most people are well, the kind of generally happy to just have the mix yeah but sometimes the mix isn't in a good place and it's a pen so do it like that um i guess also you might want to solo their mic or something while you're while they're singing and yeah check it yeah out. and, and you don't want them you don't want them to be like yeah um but a, a great thing to you know with josh stone and mm. you know she's quite a big artist yeah it's just making them feel comfortable yeah you know not just as soon as they come in, go All right, come on, we're against the <laughs> clock, go sing. Yeah. You know, there's, but you've got to kind of jump when they when they're yeah, ready yeah. to go, haven't you? You've got yeah, to be ready you have for them. to. You're on their time, and if they so, want to hang out and have a chat, or you know, you can get some lunch, whatever it is, you know, just make them feel comfortable. I think it's the main thing. Mm. Comfortable and happy before they go in the booth, and then you're off to a pretty good start. Mm. So, so you're no longer at Psalm, I gather you. No. Nope. So you've gone freelance. Um, I've gone freelance, given it a shot. And what have you been up to then? How long ago was that when you left Psalm? Uh, quite June. Recent. Right. 2011. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And you've been keeping freelance. busy. I have. Yeah. Um, from various contacts I made whilst at Psalm, and right. generally just you know ringing people up and yeah. annoying people until they give me a until they give me work. Excellent. Um, no, it's it's been good. Worked with a whole range of people. It's good because I get to work with unsigned bands as well, which is uh, something I've always liked doing anyway. Mm. Because you, you can be a bit more hands on, you know. You can be a bit more part of the band, yeah. You know, which is great. And um, and where have you been doing things like that? Um, home studios, or um, I've been doing mixes for mixes for people, which I do at my house or mm. my friends got a studio which I can go around and you know check mixes on because it's a treated room and everything yeah um, I work with a guy called Noah and um, he's an artist but luckily he's got he's got money so he gets to take me to places like Abbey Road and Great. all the you know, all the big studios with him mm. so that's good um, yeah but I can't remember what was the question now <laughs> I don't know almost so what, other, what other good techniques do you think you've picked up along the way that you do? Uh, what, what are you good at? What's your specialty? My specialty? Um, I mean, if you, if you were really, to be I mean, presented with a drum kit to record, do you 
under mic all the toms and go crazy and have three mics in the bass drum, or would you go for a minimal approach if you're doing a kind of... I would usually go three mics on the bass drum. I don't normally under mic the toms. Uh, a lot of time you don't have the time to do all that. Sometimes, you know, people turn up and budgets and time allowance are kind of like pff, standard, just yeah. get a drum kit sound, you know. I think people forget about that when they're designing gear, don't they? There's too many knobs on things and you think, yeah. you know... There can't like, be too many knobs on things. You go, yep, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. sorted. Um, no amazing tricks. I like to um, sort of block off the kick drum, you know, with like... Big bit of carpet. Big, big, big bit of carpet. And maybe make a make a tunnel of you know, mics at the end to get a bit of boom out of the kick. Um, Room mics, I think, is the trick for drums. Yeah. A couple of 47s, got quite like knee height, maybe. All right. And um, just squash the hell out of them. What are you squashing with? I like um, 1178. Yeah. Uh, pretty good to do that. In. Yep. All the buttons in. Um, fast attack, fast attack, fast release, and just have it pumping, and then just bring that down. That sounds great. Um, but nothing, nothing groundbreaking. I don't think that I do on, <laughs> on drums really. Um, and a few, yeah, a few other mics. I mean, uh, fifty-seven in at the, you know, just pointing at the drummer's waist, kind of. Oh, right. Thing, right in there, and just throw a few mics about in here. <laughs> you know. So the one at the waist, where's that coming from? What sideways? Um, behind him. I've, I've done it in the front. So oh, if you look okay. at the kick drum, yeah. so sort just of in, between, the kit. in between the toms mm. on top of the kick. Okay. There's variations in that. I've seen some people go in that angle and then right in at the snare, mm. or just have it, you know, just pointing in at the. Just pick up a general bit of everything. Bit of something. Isn't bit it? of everything. Yeah. I think the thing with drums is people are starting to get bored of the. Oh, it sounds like a drum kit. Mm. So if you can just be like, yeah, but look at this. <laughs> yeah. If you've got a fader, you can just push up, which makes it sound a bit. Quirky, a bit mm. livelier or something. Oh, I guess that's I the thing about the Jim Abbas in his cassette decks and things, isn't it? Really? Yeah, yes, I that's exactly that what stuff. it is. Yeah. Um, I can't remember who it was I was working with, and they were they just said, "Oh, just get some P's and M's and chuck them on the floor anywhere." You know, just a bit of something, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I'm not one to get too involved in the whole phase, like measuring distances of overheads. Because where do you measure it from? Where's the middle? The kick or the snare? Yeah. Just, you know. And then you add a middle one, and then they don't measure up. Just you know, I don't. I don't get the tape measure out or anything no. like that. Um, yeah, there you go. Sorry, yeah. it's nothing groundbreaking. I can. <laughs> I can really. There probably is. So you just haven't realised. Yeah, I'm just keeping it quiet. <laughs> and do you keep up your guitar playing then these days? Are you still... not enough as I would like to. Um, it does, when you start working in a studio, a big studio, you kind of, you have to forget about any social life, mm. friends, family, mm. <laughs> you know, any of that, because you're in there. Do you live in central either. London? Any, any? I'm in, I live in Shepherd's Bush, yeah, so I'm pretty central, yeah. pretty close. Very good, good place to be. And, um, yeah, so no, I don't play the guitar as much. I mean, like I said, I used, used to play since I was eight. Mm. Um, I've recently started playing more. Mm. Um, just sort of learning the odd song mm. here and there that I like. Um, looking to start some sort of band at some yeah. point because being freelance now, I've got more time. Mm. You know, um, I'm not as tied down as I used to be. Mm. So maybe now's the time to get out there and yeah. make Have some you, noise. Do you write music at all? Have you got into any of that? Um, I I do. Not that I'm a big metalhead, right. so. I tend to like just writing noise. <laughs> yeah. I like, you know, I like bands like, uh, not noise, but like Mogwai. Yeah. And very introverted, too bit, many effects pedals kind bit, of stuff. Bit prog. Yeah, yeah, it's all fun in your bedroom. I don't know who else is going to listen to it, but, <laughs> you know. So, I, try, I try and write every yeah. now and then. Yeah, and then with a... Uh, do you get out to gigs of, to find people to work with, or how, do you, how does work come to you these days? Um, Apart from your what? sound connection, is it all sound connections? It's they? not. No, I've got a, you know a lot of friends from uni yeah. and college and even home. Um, friends, word of mouth. Yes. Um, the website's been very helpful. Mm. Recordproduction.com's been really helpful actually. <coughs> I've, had, I've actually had a, 
a decent amount of work come through that. Mm. From just from putting my you know, putting profile up and that's it. Really. It's just networking, yeah. general kind yeah. of Facebook. Even I've had mm -hmm. good amount of work. Just somewhat a band. I don't even know why I was following them. I don't even know who they were. But they mm -hmm. something came up saying we're looking for an engineer mm. to record some guitars. I've been working with them for a couple of months now. Great. Um, that's it really, just word of mouth and you know, when giving cards out to everyone. <laughs> you know. What's the same card though? It's obviously working very well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't can't give it away. It's, free uh, massage included. Yeah, there's there's some freebies involved. It's <laughs> 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 so, own own one nine one number. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know, just Got blag it a bit, haven't you? Yeah, <laughs> well you do. You're right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I've been very lucky to have have the CV that I've got. Yeah. You know, the people that I have worked with. Hmm. I've been very lucky to, you know, be able to say that I've done that, as opposed to someone who, you know, who's maybe starting out and is hmm. trying to go freelance straight away. Yeah. And I think the, that the time at Sam is a big help. Yeah, massive help. Hmm. Worked with some really good artists and. Producers and engineers and mm. whatnot. Uh, well, me and a couple of friends have kind of set up a little, not a business, but a kind of a, a collective. A collective called London Studio. It's just a way of getting us work, basically. Right, right. Um, it's called London Studio Engineers. Uh -huh. Dot com. The site might be down for maintenance at the moment. I'm not sure. But basically, we're three guys. We're all right. we're all ex Sam. Oh, okay. Um, and one of the guys owns Ravenscourt Studios, yep. so we've got premises if mm -hmm. we need it. The other guy, Raul, um, sorry, the first guy's name is Sam. Uh, the other guy called Raul, he owns loads of equipment. Mm. He's got sort of Royers and wow. all kinds of mics yeah. and stuff. So, you know, and between when, the three of us. Where, where, yeah, what have you got? Where then? do I fit? Where do you bring, what do you bring to the party? I'm just the cheeky one, tagging along. <laughs> tagging along on the back. Um, <laughs> You're I'm one with the skills. I'm the one with the contacts. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> um, so, I, I have access so, yeah, to. How does that work if somebody comes to the London Studio Engineers? Engineers.com. Um, <laughs> so what does that happen? What happens? Well, because basically, the, well, the original thinking was because studios don't really hire anymore, everyone's on a freelance mm. basis. Mm. And I know from being at some, you end up with piles of CVs of, um, you know, for everyone, from yeah. half decent people to amazing people. You don't know who's who. So our thinking was rather than every time a studio is short of an assistant or an engineer mm -hmm. or whatever it is, rather than having to sift through all the CVs, mm. we would just be like a one sort one stop shop really. You phone this number, right. and we are. It's only three of us at the moment, but. The plan is to become a trusted yeah. group that you Approved. know. One, um, I need someone. I phone them. Yeah. They'll send me. Somebody good. They'll send someone over. Yeah. And we've got someone who's very well connected in the, not in a dodgy way. Um, who's very well connected in the music business and studio side of things, mm -hmm. and she's kind of helping us out, getting it out, marketing and oh, stuff. Good. Um, but yeah, so I mean, because we've all got different skills. Like I've worked in various different studios, so. Mm. If someone said, "Oh, we're working at, I don't know, Sofa Sound or whatever," mm. I've been there. Yeah. So maybe then I get the job, or if they, you know. So we just try and divvy it up in terms of who we think is most, or if you know the other two are busy, then obviously the other mm. person gets it. Yeah. But that's so, quite a new thing. So right. That sounds interesting. Yeah. I thought it was a good idea. Sounds like a great Better idea. Better than sitting on your bum waiting for the phone to ring, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Very good. Yeah, so that so I have. Yeah, it was an equipment question. So I do have access to yeah. various mics and yeah. bits and bobs and studio space. And and stuff. I mean, would you Come would you handy. want to have your own studio? Is it an ambition? You think in the future? Um, yeah, maybe just somewhere for me to work. Yeah, I don't know if I'd bother about making it a commercial no. thing. No, but yeah, I mean, ideally I'd have. Mm. You know, I wouldn't be sat in my bedroom. Um, but for the time being, it works. Yeah. So. Sounds like you're doing very well with it. Thanks. Um, enjoying it. <laughs> yeah. That's the main thing, isn't it? Yeah. Doing exactly. what you like. Exactly. And having a girlfriend that can support you when you don't have any money coming in. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's equally important. Yes. <laughs> 
Yeah. Always got someone with a well-paid, sensible, <laughs> consistent job. Yeah. That's my top tip. <laughs> Getting on with people, being personable is a big part. And just putting the effort in. People can see you, you know, putting the effort in. You kind of... I mean, I get, I got some work from, there's some American producers, um, Claude Kelly and Chuck Harmony and John John Tracks, do a lot of R&B, hip hop -y, pop stuff. And I did one session with them at Sam, and it was, a, there was a writing session, and they were sort of writing on their, you know, Black Breeze or whatever it is. Right. And it got to a point where they wanted to track the lyrics, and I was engineering, and they didn't have any lyrics written out. But as they were writing, I was sort of writing them down. So, you know, just little touches, kind of like, yeah, yeah. they're like, oh, you're good. You know, my guy in America doesn't do that. So then when they come back, their manager's like, right, anyone I manage, you can work with them when we come back. So Fantastic. that's led to work. And then, and that's it, really. That's yeah. Little touches. But being personable is a really, hmm. you know, but that, having, that... a, having a barrage of bad jokes to break the ice always works. Oh, cool. Tell us a bad joke, then. <laughs> Ah, oh, um, <laughs> I've got a lot. Uh, I bought a, I, st I stole a boomerang off a ghost. That'll come back to haunt me. Um, oh they get worse. They get worse. <laughs> but, okay, I'll stop with the jokes. <laughs> but do you think that that? I mean, the thing about typing the lyrics is great. Is that something that's come from your psalm training, or is that something that? Yeah, that's something that's come from Trevor. It just right. be ready for everything. Yeah, you know. It's definitely, yeah, actually, definitely something that's just come from. And I guess somebody like his, Trevor, you've got to kind of be one step ahead. You have, you, you have to be, yeah. But yeah. not even, you never know quite what you're thinking. No, <laughs> so two steps ahead, and one yeah. of them might be right. Yeah, you can have your lucky. options open. Yeah, so exactly, it's just thinking ahead, yeah. which is again another. You know, if you're in the studio and you're assisting, and you hear someone mention, oh, maybe a guitar would be good. You should assume that a guitar player is going to turn up. You know. So be ready to go, mm. and that's that's definitely a, a Trevor thing actually. Mm. Just being, you know, prepared. Mm. I think.